Prank Kids, one of the most fun decks I have played in Master Duel to date. It is slightly complicated, but stick to this tutorial and I'll tell you step by step how to play this deck optimally. Now I know there's a lot of text on a lot of these cards, so this can be really complicated. So I'm gonna give you just an easy breakdown of what Prank Kids do. All Prank Kids cards have two effects. First one being, once they're attributed, they will special summon another Prank Kid. The idea behind it is to be able to special summon one of each Prank Kid on one turn so you can get all your effects out and set up your board well. Each Prank Kid card also has a secondary effect, whether it be dealing damage to your opponent, gaining life points, adding a card to your hand, or sending a card to the graveyard. Now the good thing about this deck is no matter how you open you normally will open with one of these prank kids cards in your hand so here is how the strategy works step one you want to normal summon a prank kids monster the ideal card you want to normal summon first if it's in your starting hand would be a lampsies lampsies once it's tributed off will deal 500 attack damage to your opponent and then special summon a card so you start with your lampsies link summon into a meow meow moo meow meow moo is your graveyard engine this is the one card you always want to keep in your graveyard because you're going to need to activate it on your opponent's turn to help you your victory if you've opened lampsies or dropsies once tributed you want to grab a fanzies fanzies once tributed will send a card to the graveyard your next step will be to link summon the fanzies and the meow meow moo into a dodo doodle do using fanzies effect you want to send a prank kids pandemonium to the graveyard because you're going to grab this card back very important this is a quick play spell that fusion summons one prank kids fusion monster from there, you're going to activate Dodo's first effect, where you can add a Prank Kid Spell or Trap to your hand. So what you want to add is your Prank Kid Pranks. Prank Kid Pranks will allow you to discard a card and summon a token to the field. And then you're going to special summon the Dropsies. Dropsies, once Tribute Summoned, will give you 1,000 life points. So in your first hand, you'll be able to deal 500 attack damage and then gain 1,000 LP. From there, you're going to activate Dodo's secondary effect. You're going to Tribute this card off to then target two Prank Kid monsters in your graveyard and add them back to your hand and you're gonna want to add that pandemonium right back plus either your lambsies or whatever card you started with you then want to activate prank kid pranks to discard a card and then summon a token on your field as of right now you will have a dropsies and a token on the field and with those two you're gonna want to link summon into a bow wow bark once you've tributed off those cards, you'll be able to then special summon another Prank Kids card to the field. You're gonna wanna summon a Fanzies in defense. So now your field looks like Bow Wow Bark plus Fanzies in defense with a Prank Kid Pranks on the field. Then you should set your Pandemonium and end your turn. In the end phase, Prank Kid Pranks secondary effect will activate. So make sure you add all the cards that are not named Meow Meow Moo. Remember, this card is your savior card. This card is what's going to help you win the duel. Once Prank Kid Pranks resolves, you will also get to draw a card, so you get a plus one, and then you end your turn. Now, if you played this right, in your hand, you will have Dropsies plus Lampsies with a Fanzies on the field and a face down Pandemonium. Fanzies, Lampsies, and Dropsies fusion summon into the boss card of this deck, which is Prank Kid's Battle Butler. Battle Butler's special effect is if you tribute this card, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. You want to make sure to activate this on your opponent's turn, not on your turn. So from there, anything that your opponent is doing, you want to time it just right, wait for them to get their field fully set up, hopefully they didn't pop any cards that you had in your front row, and wait for them to attack. You flip up your Pandemonium, Fusion Summon into your Butler, activate Butler's effect, but instead of it tributing itself with a Meow Meow Moo in the graveyard, this will act like your Tribute Summon, this will get banished, and then you get to destroy all monsters on your opponent's side of the field. If you place Battle Butler directly behind Bow Wow Bark, Battle Butler will gain an additional 1,000 attacks, so you're looking at a 4,000 attack battle butler and a 2000 attack bow wow bark that is 6000 attack from there your opponent will probably end their turn so on your turn you have a chance to start that engine all over again with a clear field any card that you have in your hand that is a prank kids card you start the same strategy you summon a prank kids you go into meow meow moo once it's tributed you then special summon another prank kids you then link summon into dodo dodo activates 
add a prank kit spell a trap card to your hand so you can add either another pandemonium if you have got two battle butlers or you can add a prank kids place prank kids place is your field spell which allows you to add one prank kids monster to your hands and if you fusion summon at any time where prank kids place is on the field all your prank kids monster will get a 500 attack boost you'll have a dodo and another prank kids card in the field preferably a fanzies activate dodo's secondary effect add any two prank kids monsters from your graveyard to your hand then activate prank kids pranks discard a card summon a token go into bow wow bark again and now you have a field of 8,000 attack power with two bow wow barks and a battle butler it may take you two or three tries to get the strategy down but once you get it that is your bread and butter strategy all the other cards that are teched into this deck are there for protection of drawing power maxi helps you draw ghost ogre and snow rabbit helps you stop effects on the field ash blossom stops effects and drawing cards nibiru gets a special summon itself once your opponent has normal or special summon five monsters on their field in one turn which we all know is very easy to do in this game raigeki pops all monsters harpy's feather duster pops all back row monster reborn will let you summon a monster from the graveyard whether it's yours or your opponents terraforming will grab the prank kids place feel spell card msc to pop back row forbidden chalice to stop monster effects call by the grave to stop hand traps forbidden droplet to stop effects infinite impermanence to stop effects and one prank kids plan just in case you want to link summon on your opponent's turn you'll have the ability to do it with this card now there is one advanced play here that you can make which involves Thunder Dragon Fusion, or Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. If you are going turn two and you wanna get that Battle Butler out much faster, based on what's in your graveyard, if you've got a Fanzies, Lampsies, and Dropsies in your grave, you can link summon into a Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. It has two effects. First one, it can target one face up monster on the field and turn it to a dark monster. Second one, you pay 2000 LP and it will act like one fusion or polymerization card in your deck by sending that card from your deck to your graveyard. You can only send one card and that will be your Thunder Dragon Fusion. And with the Fanzies, Lampsies, and Dropsies in your graveyard, Thunder Dragon Fusion will fuse into a Battle Butler by adding these cards all back to your deck and now you have a boss monster on the field. So that's two ways you can get Battle Butler out if you play smart, but first you should get the initial strategy down, get it memorized, and then start playing with some other secondary strategies. That's the deck, those are the steps. Take a look at the replays and enjoy. All right, first duel up. I did not draw into any of my Prank Kids cards, but I drew into lots of negate and lots of destruction for back row and front row cards. So ideally, this was not a bad hand. I see that I'm going up against a Black Rose or a Rose Dragon deck, so I'm able to stop a lot of the plays. Plus there's a Dark Magical Circle, which tells me there's gonna be some banishing with Dark Magician. So the strategy here is to stop whatever play this opponent was trying to do. I draw into a Prank Kid Lampsies, and that is my optimal card. Prank Kid Lampsies instantly goes into that Meow Meow Moo play. And here is how the strategy works. Like we said earlier on, Prank and Lampsies activates, deals the damage. Here comes the Dropsies. Tribute both of them off. Link summon now into a Dodo Doodle Doo. Dodo Doodle Doo hits the field. Dropsies activates, boosts my life points up by 1,000. So now I'm at 9,000 life points. There's my fanzies. Dodo Doodle Doo activate its effect. Add the Prank Kid Pranks. Activated secondary effect, tribute itself off. Add the Dropsies and the Lampsies back to the hand so one and two come back to the hand activate prank kid pranks i'm going to send the lampsies there's my token here comes bow wow bark to the field now although i'm not able to get my boss monster out i do have a full strategy here fanzies will send the pandemonium here comes the roxies tribute both of those off because i want to get that pandemonium play back here comes Predator Plant Verte Anaconda, and now I know I've got just the right amount of cards in my graveyard. I'm gonna set and pass. I need to get that drop season in the graveyard next. I'm gonna add all these back. From Prank Kid Pranks, secondary effect. Lamp season now, I get drawn my plus one. My field, even though it looks like it's not set up, is very well set up. My opponent now is very afraid of what my back row cards are, decides not to attack, and that's the idea. Those were set bluffs, but my Forbidden Droplet was still there. Tribute summon off the Lampsies. In comes Meow Meow Moo again. Drop the Meow Meow Moo, Lampsies activates. Deals another five. Now here comes the Fanzies play that I wanted to do because I was going turn two. Here comes the Dodo Doodle Doo. 
This is the optimal strategy right now. Activate Fanzies. Fanzies will now send, I believe, another Pandemonium is what I wanted to send to the grave. Pandemonium goes to the grave. In comes Dropsies. Dodo Dodo Do will now grab the Pandemonium. Activate secondary effect. Now I'm going to grab the Roxies and the Fanzies. I already have a Dropsies and Lampsies in my hand, plus a Pandemonium. My boss monster is now set. Pranky Pranks will send the Roxies. There's the token. One and two get tributed off. Here comes the Bow Wow Bark. Bow Wow Bark, remember, will boost up any other Prank Kids monster that's it, that it points to. There's That's how that boost works. Activate Predator Planet Verte, secondary effect. Send all those cards now back to the hand. Here comes the Butler. Butler now is also going to attack in. Boom, there goes the first card. Now I know he's got an Alpha Magician Girl. I forbidden droplet that to prevent that from activating. There goes the Bow Wow Bark, attacks that. Now I know I can attack him directly. Dealt a good amount of damage. Whatever play he has next, I am not too worried about. And I'm gonna add all these cards back to the hand. One, two, and three. And I get to draw into another Lamb Seas with a Pandemonium in hand. If I had a second Battle Butler, I could tribute some, I could fusion summon, I should say, into another Battle Butler. My opponent then starts to play defensively by bringing out his Rose Dragon. And here comes Dark Magician Girl. I pop the Dark Magical Circle just in case he had something else happening. Battle Butler now activates its effect. Send the Meow Mamu. Pop all the monsters on the field. And there you go. That is the strategy that you want to have. Meow Mamu is the card you want to keep in the graveyard specifically just for that. All right, here we go. I open up pretty well. I'm going to speed this one up just a little bit so you can see the plays. I open up fairly well because I have the Prank Kids cards in hand. Now, my opponent does stop my play with an Ash Blossom, but as you can see, Prank Kids are very, very versatile, so I wasn't too, too worried because I had the Prank Kid pranks in hand, so I could still get off my Dodo Doodle Doo play with that token. Now, even if you don't know what your opponent is going to be playing, if you have your board set up the way you want it to be set up, and if you're grabbing the cards that you need, you can pretty much control how Prank Kids plays. So watching whatever my opponent plays, I can see he's playing Joker's Knights. I already know how this, this deck works. It likes to swarm the field as fast as possible. So I'm going to take those attacks. I'm going to pop that back row in my end phase. And it was a Joker's Wall, so then he gets to still add some cards back to his hand. But still, not too worried. I have so many engines with all those Prank Kid cards in my hand. So if you just take a look, you'll see how quickly the strategy works with this. I sent off that Nibiru because I didn't think I needed it with the Joker's Knight because I knew I was going to win pretty much in this turn or in the next turn. Prank Kids plays is ideal because it gives me not only the light, it not only gives me the attack boost, it also reduces my opponent's monsters. And you can see you'll just chain after chain after chain, just summoning, boosting, attacking, link summoning some more, all of it here. Really easy plays once you get that strategy down. Add both the Lampsies to my hand and the Roxies. And now I've got a full field. I got everything I need. Not a full field. I got a full hand of everything I need right here. So I can Pandemonium right here if I wanted to. I wanted to Bow Wow Bark first. I wanted to get those life points. Here's the Pandemonium play. Send off all three in the hand. There's a Battle Butler. Now I can just attack in freely. Get the boost. Fancy's activates. Send that card to the graveyard to set up my next turn play. There it is. Again, I sent, I got to grab a Roxy's, get some more of a boost. I could have Link Summoned there if I wanted to as well, but I decided I didn't want to. What I was going to wait for is for his turn to activate my Battle Butler's effect to destroy all cards he has on the field by sending that Meow Meow move from the graveyard to the Shadow Realm. So take a look, you're gonna see, he's gonna try to do a couple plays here. Pull up the Prank Kids Planks here because you know what, or Prank Kids Plan here because you know what, I kinda wanted to just maybe Blink Summon as fast as possible in case he happens to swarm the field faster than I thought. He grabs a Link Spider, which didn't mean much to me because here we go, Battle Butler activates, pops the field, and that's a win. One of my favorite starting hands that I started off with here, Prank Kids Cards plus Harpy's Feather Duster, Monster Reborn, Infinite Impermanence, and Ash Blossom. You couldn't ask for a better starting hand. I'm just gonna go through the main strategy here that you can see. Even though we started with the Fanzies, it was fine. Fanzies grab Lampsies, Sense of Pandemonium, Meow Meow Moo, and Lampsies tribute off into the Dodo. We all know when Lampsies gets tributed, it deals a 500 attack. Plus I get to tribute some of it as well. So there's a 500 attack you're gonna see resolve right now. He gets hit. I'm going to add the Dropsies to the hand. Dodo Doodle Doo. Grab the Prank Kid Pranks. It's going to tribute itself off. And I'm going to grab two from the graveyard back to the hand. I'm going to grab the Lampsies and then the Pandemonium. Very cookie cutter play. Even though I don't know what my opponent is playing, 
What I do know is that he has no hand traps because I remember this duel had zero delays. So it let me play freely, so I was able to get this out just the way I wanted. There's the Bow Wow Bark to the field. Bow Wow Bark drops these, gives me the 1K. Add the fancies in defense. Prank Kid Pranks now activates. Grabs a three, sends two back to the deck. One to the extra deck, and then I grab one, and it's a Nibiru. Couldn't ask for anything better than a Nibiru, I must say. I see that it's Trap Tricks, and because I see Trap Tricks, now I know my Nibiru is pretty much dead. Trap Tricks is not known for swarming the field with five monsters at a time. They're known for setting up a back row. He Link Summons off here into the Serra, but I've played Serra before, and I've played Trap Tricks before. I'm not worried, even though he put the Serra right in front of my infinite impermanence. Harpy's Feather Duster here is the clutch card. He sets the entire back row, and all I need to do is just wipe it. First thing I do is wipe the, the whole back row, then I start the whole play of Link Summoning into Meow Meow Moo, Link Summoning off again, Tribute Summoning, Special Summoning, and doing the whole thing, and you'll see just how easy this play is once the strategy is down. There's nothing your opponent can really do. Now the fun of this deck too is that you learn complicated combos. Once you learn how to run a Prank Kids combo, you can pretty much learn any other combo other decks run. Now this duel here, this was just an easy, easy duel. I had two Maxis, Ghost Ogre, Nibiru. I had everything that I pretty much needed. I'm just gonna do the normal strategy and you're gonna see just how about how quickly my opponent realizes that once my entire board is set up, there isn't much that they can do just to stop my Prank Kids plays. There's the Dodo, Dodo's gonna activate, and you can see, same strategy I used, same strategy we spoke about in the opening tutorial, is the same strategy you're gonna use pretty much throughout all of your duels. This is how it works, grab the Prank Kid Pranks, Dodo Doodle Duel, tributes itself, you're gonna grab the two, so now I've got Dropsies, Fanzies, and Lampsies. All I need is a Pandemonium, and I would already have my boss card. Prank Kid Pranks activates, I'm gonna send the Lampsies, there's a the token, there comes the Bow Wow to the field again. Just Really simple combos, you pull these off, you set up your field, there's not much your opponent can do. Because we're going turn one, Bow Wow's effect will not activate, meaning I won't be able to quick summon it off and then grab cards, but I don't want to, because I've got Prank Kid Pranks. I see now I've got a Lampsies in hand, I've got the Dropsies and the Roxies on field. He activates the tuning, I decide, I know, I know what this deck is, he's gonna swarm the field, so I set off my Max C. Now I know it's up to my opponent to figure out whether or not he wants to start all of the plays. So, he, does, he starts doing the thing and in comes Maxi. The Maxi challenge has been accepted. I get to draw pretty much all the cards I would ever need now, thanks to the Synchron deck. Now he's gonna try to do his entire play, his entire strategy to see how quickly he can beat me. And all I know right now is this, I can debut him at a moment's notice if I want to. I'm gonna let him do pretty much anything he wants. He's gonna pull off all these plays. Now that I see a shooting riser dragon, I realize, you know what? Nibiru is not the strategy I want. I wanna stop some of the plays he has first. So I see he's gonna do the, the librarian. Shooter, shooter riser dragon then activates. Librarian then activates, grabs a card. Here we go, more max C challenge. I am perfectly fine with all of this. It just keeps fueling what's in my hand. Stardust Dragon to the field now. Add some more cards to the hand. This is just, this is this is perfect for me. Stop the Librarian play. Stardust Dragon and sends itself to the graveyard. Doesn't really matter though. I don't think you realize that Ghost Ogre will still activate. Ghost Ogre activates, pops Librarian. Librarian doesn't get act act activate and that's it. His whole strategy is out the window and my hold hand was ready to go for a Battle Butler. Now for these next two duels, I'll just let you watch the strategy. I won't have to talk over them because at this point, you understand how it works. Just take a look at how we play the deck and enjoy it.
Thank you.